Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. In this episode, we are going to look at the cooling systems in a hybrid electric vehicle. The hybrid vehicle I have behind me here is a 2017 Toyota Prius Eco. And this is the Prius that I've taken the P610 transaxle out of and took it all apart, explored it, figured out how it worked and made a video on that. It's lithium ion battery assembly, it's inverter converter, and now I've reinstalled the transmission back in the vehicle and I'm about to put the radiator in along with all the heater hoses and coolant hoses and water pumps and everything else and I decided well I probably ought to take advantage of this time and, and show everybody the parts of a hybrid cooling system particularly on the, the Toyota systems, but other systems are very similar. So there are many parts to a hybrid cooling system. We have to cool the hybrid transaxle. We have to cool the inverter assembly. Of course, we have to cool the internal combustion engine. We have electric water pump for the engine, electric water pump for the inverter assembly. We have a heat exchanger in the exhaust system. We have a heat exchanger for the transmission fluid. We have, of course, the heater core, the regular part of the radiator for the engine, the part of the radiator to cool the inverter, cooling fans, and all kinds of hoses going everywhere. So <laughs> let's, let's take a look at these pieces one at a time, along with a few other miscellaneous things that I think you'll find interesting uh, as we explore the cooling system on this car. So the first thing let's look at is the electric water pump for the internal combustion engine. Okay, here we are under the right front corner of the car. Just over my shoulder here is the front bumper. We've got the right front uh, brake rotor right here. And as you can see, right here is the engine harmonic balancer. Now normally on any other engine there would be a drive belt connected to that but as we zoom in here I want you to see that not only is there no belt but there are no grooves for a belt that is not a pulley that is just simply the harmonic balancer to counteract the twisting forces of the internal combustion engine on the crankshaft but right next to it up in up deep there with those weird little aluminum pieces sticking up is the electric water pump. Let's get a better view. Okay, if we look in through the opening by the air conditioning condenser, we can see the electric water pump. We can see the cooling fins on the left of the electric engine water pump there. And you'll notice that the coolant inlet hose and thermostat is located on the back side of the electric water pump. So the inlet from the radiator comes in on that tube right there. We have a 180 degree Fahrenheit thermostat that will open up and allow coolant to come in to the electric water pump where it's circulated through the block first and then up into the cylinder heads. Okay, so we just saw the electric water pump for the engine, the inlet from the radiator with the 180 degree thermostat. Now the next thing is we have coolant running through the throttle body to keep it from icing up. That coolant comes from the EGR cooler heat exchanger. So when we use the exhaust gas recirculation system, which runs really hot exhaust gases back into the combustion chamber under certain uh, conditions, we cool those exhaust gases to make the EGR system more efficient. There's an EGR cooler that's liquid cooled where it receives coolant and sends it back to the inlet of the engine block. There's a little bypass uh, of the thermostat to keep coolant circulating there but some of that also goes to the throttle body to keep the throttle body from icing up with the pressure differential there so there are some little coolant hoses there 
All right, so under the hood here is our EGR valve, and it has a tube that's going to send exhaust gases back to the intake manifold to circulate them back into the engine under certain conditions. But that exhaust gas needs to be cooled down to make it more efficient. And so back behind it, and it's really hard to see, is a heat exchanger for the EGR system. You can see some little coolant hoses. So the coolant goes through the EGR cooler, comes down, goes through a pipe over to the throttle body itself to heat it, to keep it from freezing. Then the fluid returns, goes back, makes a turn, and goes back over to the water pump and the coolant inlet where there's a bypass uh, pipe to let the fluid in. While we are here underneath the hood, we've got another hose that comes from the bottom of the EGR cooler that goes over, tees in with a hose from the radiator and goes to our coolant surge tank or storage tank for the internal combustion engine. This surge tank, as you can see, has a, has a cap that you should not open uh, when it's hot. It also has an air release valve, this little screw right here needs to be removed when you add fluid to it for the first time. So I've drained all of the coolant out of the engine and the inverter uh, system and we will have to add fluid back in but there's a special bleeding procedure to make sure we get all the air out. While we are here under the hood we've got the inverter with converter assembly where we have two coolant fittings. We have the inlet right here where it comes in and goes to the DC to DC converter as we saw in my inverter uh, teardown video. And then it goes over and travels up to the up, upper part of the inverter where the IGBTs are cooled. And then it comes out this fitting here and goes to this, the little storage tank for the inverter cooling system. So there are two separate cooling systems, two separate portions of the radiator on this vehicle. One of them to cool the inverter and the transmission, the other one to cool the internal combustion engine. The transmission cooler is right down here, as you can see. We have hot fluid coming from the transmission oil pump, goes into this heat exchanger, the transmission cooler as it's called, and then gets pumped back up to the top of the transaxle where it goes in and for lubrication and for cooling the stators. And then we have uh, an inlet and an outlet pipe down at the bottom there for coolant from the inverter portion of the radiator. This orange cable right here runs over to our electric air conditioning compressor right down here. The air conditioning system on this car operates very much like any other air conditioning system, except it has an electric variable speed air conditioning compressor to modulate the amount of refrigerant going into the evaporator to remove heat from the passenger compartment. On the front of the vehicle, we have a standard air conditioning system, receiver dryer and condenser assembly. The receiver dryer is this tube off to the side, and of course the condenser right there. Also, while we are here under the hood, we can barely see the coolant outlet pipe right there from the internal combustion engine going to the radiator. So that's the outlet pipe right there and the inlet pipe is right there on the back of the electric water pump. Okay, so we've seen some coolant hoses for the EGR cooling system. We've seen coolant hoses that keep the throttle body from icing up. We've seen coolant hoses for air bleed. We've seen coolant hoses for circulation back to the surge tank or the reservoir tank. On the reservoir tank, we saw the bleed screw for bleeding air out of the system as we add fluid, if it was drained, which this is drained. We saw the inlet and outlet pipes for the radiator hoses for the engine. 
We saw the inlet and outlet tubes for the inverter with converter assembly and the inlet and outlet tubes for the transaxle cooler. Now we still have more. Before we lift up the vehicle and look at some more components underneath, there's a few interesting parts on the front of the vehicle that I want to show you. So let's look at those. Okay, you're all familiar with a horn or the horns on a vehicle. This Prius has two horns right here. But right over here is a unique little device. And this is actually a speaker. And the technical name for it is the Vehicle Approaching Speaker. And this speaker will emit a noise, and it sounds very much like brake rotors, rusty brake rotors rubbing on brake pads at a slow speed. This will emit a noise if you are in reverse or drive from a speed of pretty much zero through about 15 miles an hour, 25 kilometers per hour. Um, it's to alert people that a vehicle is approaching because in hybrid electric mode in just electric vehicle mode these cars are so quiet that some people don't hear them coming and so it emits a sound the sound makes as soon as you put your transmission in drive or reverse the sound gets extra loud for one second and then it quiets down and then it gets louder and louder with the faster you go up to the 15 miles an hour 25 kilometers per hour so an interesting little uh, speaker. Uh, just has two wires to it like any speaker. And I'm going to uh, measure its resistance and see what uh, the voice coil resistance is if it's just a standard speaker and see if I can hook something else up to it and, and play, something, uh, play something different maybe. Uh, an, an interesting little uh, device. There's a, there is a Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard that's proposed. I'm not positive that it has been made into a final rule or a law that says that these vehicles must emit a sound as they drive automatically to keep from uh, surprising or startling people that don't hear them coming. All right, another... Uh, well, of course, that's not related to the cooling system, but this is related to the cooling system. So this assembly right here is called the radiator shutter assembly. And as you can see, it has two radiator shutter fins right here. And these fins are open. They can be closed. They can be partway open. There's a actuator over here on this side that has a position sensor inside of it. And then there's a temperature sensor over here to measure the outside air temperature uh, also. The purpose of this shutter assembly is to increase efficiency as you drive. So to, to decrease wind resistance. So when we don't need air flowing through the radiator, uh, because the engine is off or it's cool enough or whatever reason, we can close these fins and decrease our coefficient of drag. Now, as I mentioned, over here on the passenger side is the actuator assembly. Now, this is only a four-wire electrical connector here, but there are six wires right here. And I thought, well, what's that all about? Um, by the way, the, the four wires are power, ground, and the two canned communication lines um, to communicate with the actuator module. So, uh, if you guys have watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to disassemble things that aren't supposed to be disassembled. So, I just got out my pocket screwdriver and popped off the cap to this actuator. Here we go. And turns out the actuator itself just comes undone. It has a little gear drive right there that plugs into the bottom fin. So with that actuator gone, now I can close and open these fins myself. But right here is a three-wire potentiometer, it looks like. And that explains the additional wires that are in the electrical connector for the actuator 
that are not in the main harness that plugs in from the hybrid control module that's in control of the position of these. And of course, there are 13 trouble codes <laughs> for this uh, actuator. Um, I would imagine that it is, well, it looks like a brushed DC motor. Oh, by the way, the, the water pump, the electric water pump for the internal combustion engine is a brushless DC motor, a, a low voltage, 12 volt brushless DC motor. Um, okay. So anyway, that is the shutter assembly and it has its, it has its own trouble codes. As I said, there are 13 of them. There are 26 pieces of data on the, the data list for this um, actuator and temperature sensor and and so on and you can use your scan tool to command these to open and close and test them to see if it's working like it should so that's the shutter assembly and that will affect the cooling system okay the next thing we are going to look at is the exhaust heat recirculation system and we'll have to lift up the vehicle to look at this. This system, which is not new to the 2016 or fourth generation Prius, uh, I believe it was new to the 2010 Prius, which was the third generation, but it takes exhaust heat and runs it through a heat exchanger where it can, under certain circumstances, heat up the coolant that is fed to the engine block to help the engine warm up more quickly to reduce exhaust emissions. So let's take a look at that. Okay, we are under the car and looking straight up at the back of the engine block. And we have the exhaust manifold covered in a heat shield. Um, and it has a close coupled catalytic converter there, a three-way three -way catalytic converter to reduce hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and oxides of nitrogen. And it's close coupled, so it will start working almost immediately. And then if we come downstream of that catalytic converter, we have a second three-way catalytic converter, followed by the exhaust heat recirculation system, right there in the middle, followed by a sub-muffler, and then, of course, clear to the back of the vehicle, we have a muffler. Okay, here we are under the car, and let's take a look at the exhaust heat recirculation system. So the first thing I want you to notice is there are two coolant hoses coming down here. This is the inlet to the heat exchanger up on top of this exhaust heat recirculation system. And, of course, this is the outlet. The coolant that comes to the exhaust heat recirculation system has actually gone through the heater core already. It does help preheat the coolant that goes through the heater core. But the hot coolant that goes through this exhaust heat recirculation system goes into the engine block first, then up to the cylinder heads, and then into the heater core, and then back out here to the exhaust heat recirculation system, making a complete loop. So let's see how this thing works. So we have coolant coming in from the heater core, coolant going out to the engine block. The coolant coming in goes up to the top to a heat exchanger. So you can see right up on top there, I've got it labeled heat exchanger. And that heat exchanger runs the length of the exhaust heat recirculation system. So we can't see how long it, it is, but it's big. Then we have an exhaust heat control actuator right here that is going to push on this control valve. Now right now with everything cold, the control valve is closed, the control actuator is off and not extended. And what that means is exhaust will come into the recirculation system and then go up through the heat exchanger where the coolant goes through, come over and down into the back part of the exhaust heat recirculation system and then into the sub muffler so it does not have a straight path 
through the exhaust heat recirculation system. It has to go up. It takes a 90 degree turn, takes another 90 degree turn, goes to the back, another 90 degree turn comes down, another 90 degree turn and goes out the back. Now as the coolant heats up, this actuator will extend and it will push on this valve right here. And this valve is spring loaded. As you can see, I've brought it up. When that actuator sticks out and pushes on this valve, so you can see I'm pushing on the valve myself. When that valve gets pushed up all the way, it shuts off the exhaust flow through the heat exchanger up on top and just simply allows exhaust to come straight through the exhaust heat recirculation system as if it was just a straight pipe. So the exhaust heat recirculation system preheats the coolant that goes to the engine when it is needed, which would be pretty much any time the engine coolant is, is not warmed up enough. So rather than wasting the heat uh, produced by combustion and just sending it, out, sending it out the exhaust pipe, we are recovering some of it and helping heat up the engine. Now there's one other thing related to the exhaust system I thought I'd show you while we're here. This muffler has a special spring-loaded valve inside of it. So the exhaust that comes in normally would have to take a, a roundabout path to come out the exhaust pipe, the tailpipe here. But under heavy acceleration, under high pressures, there's a valve over here that will open up and allow the exhaust to take a more straight path out of the muffler. And what that does is it allows the vehicle at a idle especially and, and at low load conditions to be more quiet and to reduce some of the, the, the vibrations caused by uh, combustion pulses in the exhaust system. Okay, we are finally to our last component of the cooling system, and that is the radiator system and the fans and everything that goes with that. Uh, but before we look at that and put all that together to reinstall it in the vehicle, let's just take a look at a, a few other things under the vehicle from a different perspective. So straight up here. is our electric air conditioning compressor. And then right here is our automatic transmission fluid cooler. And then of course the transaxle that I had out on the bench and did all those demonstrations and videos with is right here. So let's take a look at the radiator system now. Okay, I have the radiator here out of this 2017 Toyota Prius Eco. And this radiator, although it looks like just about any other radiator at first glance, it's actually two radiators in one. Uh, from about right here across, you can see a dent right there and kind of a dent right here. That section of the radiator is just for cooling the inverter with converter and the automatic transmission fluid. And then everything above that is for the internal combustion engine and EGR uh, cooling. So let's take a look at what fittings and parts are here. Uh, first, since there are two radiators, there are actually two drain plugs. So we've got a drain plug right here for the inverter portion of the radiator and a separate drain plug right here for the engine portion. They have some little tubes sticking out of the side of them when you drain this coolant, you're supposed to put a hose on it and bring it down to a drain pan or a bucket so that it doesn't just run all over the frame and get all over the place. But they don't put the hoses on them anymore out of the factory like they used to. Uh, on this lower radiator portion, there is an outlet tube right here that goes to the inverter assembly. And then there's a fitting right here from the automatic transaxle fluid cooler. So just a, an in and an out 
on the lower portion of the radiator. And then on the upper portion here for the internal combustion engine, this is the inlet from the cylinder head. So this would be the hot fluid coming in. And then we have the outlet over here that would go to the inlet with the thermostat that we looked at connected to that electric water pump. And then up to the top here, we have this little tiny tube, one on each side. This is an outlet to the coolant tank. So it's, it's, it's an air bleed, basically, is what it is. It allows air to escape the system, allows us to bleed the system. And uh, there's a long tube that goes over and up to that coolant reservoir that we saw underneath the hood. And then this other tube over here um, receives coolant from the coolant reservoir. So it's an inlet. So we have an inlet from the engine, an inlet from the coolant reservoir, and then an outlet to the engine, and then an outlet to the coolant tank. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six hose fittings, two drain plugs, two sections of the radiator. Now, of course, there are two cooling fans that go with this. Let me get the fan shroud and fan assembly here. These fans spin in opposite directions of each other. Looks like this one. This one spins this direction and this one spins this direction. This fan shroud is quite easy to remove and install. It just has some little clips that slide into some brackets on the radiator itself. Of course, we've got to be careful and make sure that we're not bending any cooling fins on the aluminum radiator itself. And then we'll just pull down. Oops. Pull down. There we go. And then it's got some clips that lock it into place. So now our fan shroud is connected to the radiator itself. All right, now we have as part of this fan shroud, as you can see here, there are two bolts. Those two bolts are for an electric water pump to circulate fluid through the inverter and the transaxle cooler and back through the lower portion of this radiator. This also uses a brushless DC motor, which by the way, there are trouble codes for both the internal combustion engine brushless DC motor water pump and the elect electric water pump here, brushless DC, for the inverter assembly. Uh, this would be the inlet to the pump and this would be the outlet. This outlet goes to the top fitting of the coolant heat exchanger for the transaxle. I forgot to look up the torque on these bolts. I'll have to just snug them up for now and then look them up. I'm sure it's not very much since they screw into captured nuts in a plastic fan shroud. All right, so that's our water pump for the inverter portion, the lower portion of the, the radiator here. All right, the next thing I want to look at is the coolant reservoir for the inverter portion of the radiator. So we've got our own coolant reservoir. It just snaps into place like that. And then it's got a hose that comes over and connects to the electric water pump like that. I'm not going to put any clamps on here because I've got to take all this off to put it back up in the vehicle. I just want to show you the, the amazing plumbing uh, involved here. All right, uh, we also have a long coolant pipe that goes over to our surge tank. And we've got the hose that comes from the coolant tank back to the radiator. Right there. Looks like I've got a broken bracket right there. 
All right, over here on the inverter tank side, we've got a hose that goes from the lower portion of the inverter through a bracket and a clip and that these two hoses go to the inverter. So this is the inlet to the inverter, this is the outlet from the inverter, those two hoses right there. Then we have our long radiator hose from the cylinder head. Let's see this is going to come in right here like that. Then on the other side we have our outlet hose to the inlet of the engine and then finally we have one last hose that goes from the inverter coolant portion of the radiator over to the transmission cooler. So let's lift this up and take a look at what we have here. <laughs> this is a, a little more than what you find on most vehicles uh, anymore. Okay, let's review all the plumbing here on this 2017 Prius Eco radiator uh, system. We've got a water pump right here, an electric water pump for the lower section of the radiator, which is for the inverter cooling. So we have the inverter coolant storage tank. The water pump pulls fluid down, pumps it out this hose right here to the transmission cooler. And then the fluid from the transmission cooler goes back over and into the radiator on the lower section, where then it goes through, gets cooled, comes back up, and goes into the bottom of the inverter assembly where it cools the DC to DC converter, then goes into the top of the inverter assembly and cools the IGBT modules, and then comes back into the coolant tank, making one full cycle. Then, on the engine side of things, we have the radiator hose here from the outlet from the cylinder head on the engine that comes down, there's a temperature sensor right here, that comes into the radiator, goes through the radiator, comes back out on this other hose here where it goes in through the thermostat if it's open and circulates through the engine block, through the heater core, through the exhaust heat recovery system, and also through the EGR cooling system. There's three paths that this this coolant through the two big hoses uh, goes through. So the three are the engine block and cylinder head and then in parallel with that we have the EGR cooler system and the throttle body uh, de-icing system and then in parallel with that we have the heater core and the exhaust heat recovery system. And then we have an air bleed hose at the top that goes over to the uh, coolant tank and then an inlet from the coolant tank also and that's <laughs> that's the radiator system here on the uh, on the Prius. Now if we look back at previous Priuses they would all be very similar to this this same thing other than some of them did not have EGR valves with an EGR cooling system. The first two generations of Priuses didn't have the exhaust heat recovery system, uh, but they all had inverter cooling systems with at least one electric water pump. They all have a special bleed and fill procedure. So as you fill up these two separate cooling systems, the inverter system that we have to fill up, we just put coolant in, we use a scan tool to command the water pump to run and we keep running it until the level in the reservoir up here stabilizes. On the engine side of things we have to um, put the, the engine, uh, the hybrid system into what's called maintenance mode to force the engine to run and then warm it up, open that bleed screw on the uh, coolant tank and keep adding fluid coolant until it 
uh, stabilizes. And that is, the fluid level stabilizes. Now, the only coolant that's approved for use in Toyota hybrids is the super long life uh, coolant from Toyota or the equivalent. Um, they have very specific specifications for their coolant like any other vehicle manufacturer does. It's the same coolant that's used in both the internal combustion engine and the inverter assembly, which is pretty typical of any other hybrid uh, vehicle uh, or electric vehicle. Uh, I've got a Chevrolet Bolt right there that has three different cooling systems uh, in it. Uh, battery cooling system, the uh, electric motor cooling system, and the inverter cooling system, and they all use the same uh, coolant. I've got a Chevrolet Volt right there with three cooling systems. The engine cooling system, the battery cooling system, and the inverter uh, cooling system. They all use the same coolant, but it's not this coolant. It's whatever the vehicle manufacturer calls for. This Toyota Super Long Life coolant is already pre-mixed. It's already a 50-50 mix, so do not mix water with it. All right, we've seen <laughs> a number of things that are part of the cooling systems on this Toyota Prius, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a few things. Thank you for watching.